Hello guys, welcome back. Back on PowerPoint, and where am I up to? I'm up to the review tab now. If you know about my video tutorials, I like to get straight down to it, no messing about. So click new, and I want you to open up the template. I've selected education template, and I'm using full of fun education presentation. Double tap in it, and select and create, so we can work off this template. Once open, I want you to go up to the review tab and left click it for me. And we start assessing the ribbon at the top. Starting from spelling, so I need a few spelling errors, don't I? So I'm going to click into here and get rid of that and get rid of subtitle. Now, I click F7 like you do in Word or left click spelling ABC and it brings up the spell check for me. Now, see to the right here, I've got a couple of options I can use. One is I could ignore, so if it's a word that I want to add, it could be a name or, or something similar, or even an abbreviation acronym, I could add that just by ignoring it. Or I could ignore all so it doesn't check any spelling errors. Or I could add that. So if I click add, I could add that word as a to my vocabulary. Which I didn't really want to do, but I just wanted to show you that. So the next option would be subtitle. So if I come down here, I look for my spelling subtitle. There it is, that's the correct spelling I want. I can play it back by left clicking. Subtitle. Come down to the bottom, you can also change your language for that. So I'm going to try English. Subtitle. And then I can choose whether or not I want to change that by clicking change or change or if I've made that spelling incorrect through my whole document. So I'm going to select change. Spell check done. Click OK. Next on my list is thesaurus, which is for your synonyms. So let me highlight the word subtitle. And I'm going to select up here thesaurus. Now I'm going to close the research option. Now with thesaurus, you can see it's giving me words straight away. For example, caption, title, description. So I might go down and actually say I want caption, click the little arrow and I can insert that into my PowerPoint slide or copy it so I can paste it where I want. Or maybe I want more information so if I tap into caption and then it gives me more information on that. Click into subtitle, click into caption it gives you more information. So if I click description again it will give me more information on the word description and synonyms. So I could go to picture and again image, depiction, portrait you can see how it changes. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to select I'm going to select caption by clicking a little arrow and select insert and that's how easy it is, use the thesaurus option next really important is check accessibility this is for people with blindness or visual impairment you have to remember when they navigate, they navigate by hearing so they need to hear things so for example if there's a picture they need to know what that picture is by something reading back to them which is text to speech so you need to make sure you lay out be it a website or PowerPoint so it makes it accessible for everybody. And what this will do is it will check it for accessibility for you. Let me show you. So I'm going to click check accessibility and close the thesaurus option. So there you go, it's got missing alternative text. So if I go to slide four, double tap it, it takes me straight to slide four and it's telling me. So if someone with visual impairment or blindness comes to slide four, they know what these are going to be called because they will tell them it will say two content layout with table and they can use the tab, or if they're using JAWS software they can navigate with shortcuts, it will tell them what the bullet points are but it won't show them what this is, yeah it will just be an image so it tells you how to fix that bottom right hand corner, why fix really important steps to fix now it's important you do this because if you improve the accessibility for everybody then you're going to get more viewers and greater respect so get in a habit of using check accessibility, really important well I'm going to close that, go back to the first title Next is translate, so I'll click on slide 2 actually. We can translate, so I click the little arrow and I need to choose translation language. Germany, yeah I'm happy with German, so you can choose which language you want to translate to and click OK. Now I need to highlight the text I want to translate. So let's just do the title. Come up to translate, click on it once and select translate selected text. Now I'll give you a warning here to tell you that it's going on the internet in a secured format to Microsoft so you can choose whether or not you feel that's safe but I'm pretty sure it is, so I'll click yes so it's accessing the internet and look to the right here we've now translated it it's that easy, so I can choose to change that text by clicking insert so type 1 content layout will be inserted in the German form or if I click on it I can select copy come into here, click enter and click free and paste it in if I want so it's entirely up to you how you work that one as well. So a great option there to the right. 
Also, it's another option that I want to show you. With Translate, you've got, you've got Mini Translator. Now, it doesn't bring that box up to the right. Let me give it a name. It's a little mini box that pops up near the word and translates for you quickly. And it's handy if you've got a lot of translation to do. Let me show you. Now, click on Translator and click Mini Translator. This window will pop up again. So, again, I'm choosing yes. Now, if I go over a word and see, just see it faintly, but if I hover over the cursor, it brings it up and then you go. I've got the German version of here. If I want, I can expand that. So that will bring it to the right, as we saw before. Or I can copy it into clipboard or click play yeah. and choose what I want to do with that. Let's do another one. So I'm going to come over, bullet, hover over, and again, we've got the word bullet and in German. Play it back, bullet. and you can hear it back. So last one, second, you can hover over, and I can choose whether or not I want to copy that. So that's your translate option, and that's mini translator. Don't forget you can change the language at the bottom there if you need to. Next is your language. Now, set proofing language. I want United Kingdom, selecting that to proof read back. I need United Kingdom for spellings vary a lot with the USA. I can tick do not check spellings, but I do want to check spellings as I'm going along, so I'm going to leave that. So you choose your language there in the middle. Also in language, language preferences, so you can set up your language preference that you're using as well. Now, that brings us to comments. Now you probably use comments in a Word document, so you can add information in parts of your slide or your document. So you can add little notes. Let me show you what I mean. I'm at the end of that line, I'm going to click new comment. It comes up to the right, so I can give a comment there. It's a little symbol that indicates there's a comment there. So now I can add a little comment up here to the right. As you can see, I'm making anything up there. So farming is great. So there's my first one. Again, I'll click on here and do another one if I want. I can add a new comment to the top here as well using new comment. And then I can add another comment here. So you can add all your comments along there. And if you want, you can add a reply there. Now you can navigate here by using these arrows here to go through them. If you've got multiple ones, click continue. Or you can create a new one here as well. Hold the left button, you can move these comments where you want as well, just in case you need to reorganise them, which can happen from time to time. Now, what I don't want, I can click on here and click delete. If I don't want that, and again, I can move previous or next comments. If I go to show comments, I can get rid of that pane to the right by clicking it, open it back up, I can close it anyway by clicking the X. Also, if you don't want comment markers, uncheck show markup and they disappear here for you as well. So it's good for example if you've got a reference that you might need to do or additional information that you might forget later you can add a quick comment there. Now compare. There's a number of things you can use for compare. For example you can compare two presentations to see if there's any changes or you might want to integrate presentation with certain slides and that into the one you've got to just collect all the information. I've got an identical slide to this, I've got an identical presentation to this and I've changed some text in it, so I'm going to show you how this works. So I want to compare the original, there it is, I'm going to open it up. As it opens up, it's now going to check the one that I've currently got open with the original one, to see if there's any changes. So all changes to title 1, you see I changed that, and I can click in there, I can change to how it originally was, you remember how I originally had it? Well I didn't do the spelling correctly. Also, I can go deleted where I deleted it. Now let's go to slide two. Now, in slide two here, it's telling me there's quite a few changes. Now, I'm going to click into here. It's the title, which I knew about that anyway because I changed the language. Now, if I click underneath the content option, I've actually got content in the original. Look. So, the first bullet point isn't add your first bullet point here, it is actually some text there. And then, if I scroll down, I can then change and add what I need and what I don't want. So again, I could go down further and go to my next bullet point and add the information in. So that way it's comparing the two and then you can add the information from identical PowerPoints that might have been slightly changed or two different PowerPoints that you want to add the information into. And again, that's quite a powerful option you can use. That's just one way of using it, but there's loads. And if you're happy with the changes, click accept. I can accept all changes or accept all changes to this one slide or to the whole presentation. So I'll just set changes and I've now changed that. And then to the right, I can get rid of reviewing pane and get rid of it. Also, any changes you've done, you can track them by going previous and go back and next. So you can go through any changes. It's a bit like using the undo button, top left hand corner. 
and when I'm happy click end review and click yes and it's now done so in slide 2 I've got those changes that I got from the other PowerPoint which is start inking now you can use this for annotation so let me give you a little go on this actually I'm going to go to a slide with not so much text in it because I'm going to make a mess of it so the first thing is your pen so again you can highlight things, draw circles random change the colour if you want here, use the highlighter maybe highlight stuff maybe you want to change the thickness of the highlighter or maybe you want to erase it click the erase button there and just drag with it and it gets rid of it got fairing colours here you can use as well built in pens that you might want to use also if you create a bit of art ok I know what you're thinking that's not a way it's that art but now once I do that and click select object I can move it about quite easily but I can also lasso watch if I click lasso hold the left button I can now lasso that and then change that to the thickness angle it to where I want see I'm going back and forth put it in any position I want as so so again you might want to move that in a certain position I know it doesn't mean anything I know it's awful but you get the idea with that turn off lasso and select object just enables you to select it and move it where you want so remember the lasso option gives you that option to then take your annotation and manipulate it how you want next are these two options here so we've got ink to shape right next option ink to shape and I'll show you how this works let me get a pen choose that colour again I'm going to do a rectangle there's a shape I want it as a shape so I can move it around and turn it into a shape quick but I can't it's just a picture, an image. I mean, I could use a lasso tool, can I again round it and then, then move it and manipulate it how I want. That's not quite what I want. I want a nice straight shape. So what I'm going to do instead, if we come back out of there, do a right click, click back into pen. I want to draw something, but I'm going to select ink to shape and leave that on. So now let me do a rectangle. Creates a rectangle for me. So I might want to do a circle. Get the idea with that? And that way you can create shapes quickly to move and manipulate whatever you're doing. So that's review and that's start inking and that's having that set to ink to shapes. So any freehand you do of annotation you can turn that into a shape. But it's limited, remember that. Last of all, stop inking, closes it. And go back to review. Now last of all we've got linked notes. So you can do notes with the PowerPoint you're looking at. Let me show you. So I'm going to click link notes. But you need to save your PowerPoint first. So I'm going to click Control S and save that to my desktop. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up OneNote. I don't know if you use OneNote, but I'm going to open up a new... I'm going to open up Lecture 2. But what I'm going to do is come to the top here. I'm going to right click it and delete this, tidy it up a bit. I'm going to click a new one. I'm going to call this... PowerPoint lecture, I know it's not original. So now I've got my PowerPoint lecture, I can have my little page in there. So I've got my page there that I'm going to add. I can add multiple pages by clicking on it if I want. So let me go back to PowerPoint. Now I'm going to click Link Notes. And I'm going to go down to Lecture 2. Now I've created it there, haven't I? My page, PowerPoint lecture. Click on that. And click the sub menu. And click on the page you want. And click OK. So now that's linked. So now I can do my notes. So I've got slide six farms. Got my date there and time. Do a few notes on the PowerPoint. And there you go. See a little PowerPoint option there as well as I hover over it. So let me open up one note. And there you go. So automatically putting it totaled for me and putting in my one notes so I've got my notes for later on that I can access come to the left you've even got a link to your PowerPoint so that you can open up and go to as well click it click OK and it bring up your PowerPoint so then you sync stuff together so a really handy option definitely worth a look at so I'm going to close that and go back to my review tab so there's some basics on the review tab to get you up and running as I say play around with it that's how you learn thanks for watching